This is Rob Crowther. I'm at the CSC Insiders Briefing 2018, and I caught up with one of our speakers here in the hotel lobby, Mike Keys. Hi, Mike. Hey, Rob. What's going on? I mean, uh, besides this great conference. Yeah, the conference has been great. It's kind of like drinking from a fire hose. You learn a lot. Yeah. Um, I wanted to just chat with you briefly because you talked about your brand new book that's coming out, Unbelievable, from ISI Press, November 2018, correct? That's right. Do you know, is there a publication date, a specific day that the book will be available? Probably around November 10th. Okay. Or pre-order on Amazon, I, the I would guess. Page, the pre-order page is already there. Yeah, there you go. So it's unbelievable, and you talked about it a little bit today, and I thought it was just really interesting. I'll let you tell what it's about with uh, kind of debunking myths. Yes, well, the subtitle after the unbelievable part says, Seven Myths About the History and Future of science and religion. So I'm a historian and philosopher of science. So historians of science, well, they study dead scientists. But some of the uh, false stories that get told about the past have an effect on the way we think about ourselves today. And so uh, I also delve into kind of future-oriented uh, imaginative thinking about what might happen to humanity. Yeah. Uh, come back just a little and tell me a couple of things. How did you get interested in this subject? I mean, there's a lot of things you could write about. You are a historian, so that's obvious. Yep. But is there something that happened, anything that really just, you had that moment, got to write this book to debunk these things? Well, I've taught uh, astronomy and biology for about a quarter century. And it's amazing how many times I run into students who routinely tell me that that they've been told growing up, regardless of the schools, private, public, whatever, that uh, people in the Western tradition thought the Earth was flat, you know, through the European Middle Ages and up until the time of Columbus, as the story is often told, thought the Earth was flat until Columbus uh, showed otherwise, and of course Magellan even further uh, showed that the Earth was round, but it turns out that that's false. It's a myth, a myth in the sense of a false story that people in the Middle Ages had good reasons for believing the Earth is spherical, and often better reasons than most college students today. And so, uh, but the storyline is intended to make Christianity look anti-science. Oh, you know, back in the Middle Ages when the church was so dominant in society, they held back the growth of science, and that's why people thought the Earth was flat. Well, there, that story itself is flat wrong. Yeah. So, the... Middle Ages, or sometimes the Dark Ages, you talked a little bit about this, and I thought it was interesting to think that the Dark Ages weren't all that dark. That's another kind of part of the myth, or even a separate myth, maybe. Yeah, uh, uh, the, this label of Dark Ages was applied to the Middle Ages by the folks that lived just after the Middle Ages who thought of themselves as better, sort of, sort of a form of chronological snobbery, if you will, and, uh, which is easy to do and uh, easy to make up these stories, but when you look at the evidence, you find that during the medieval, medieval period, yes, the church had a, the Christian church had a very strong influence in society, and in fact, they were the number one supporters of astronomical research. Wow. I, I know of a prominent historian of science, John Heilbronn, who is definitely not a religious person, who's documented the church as being the number one supporter of, of uh, astronomical research over centuries of time. Uh, not just in the Middle Ages, but into to the early modern peri period as well. <coughs> so these stories are very easy to debunk, but my interest in it was especially as how often these stories get told and retold in textbooks and in just sort of the received wisdom that teachers, teachers themselves, I'm not blaming, they just sort of pick this up, it's in the air, and they retell these stories and they don't check the sources because, well, everyone knows that people in the Middle Ages thought the earth was flat, even though not so. You talk about the textbooks and that the stories get retold there and in um, academia, maybe. But it's not just there. It's culture. Yep. And popular culture, like in science fiction, has its own sort of impact in that. And I was thinking of things like this sort of uh, mystical religions that come out of things like George Lucas's Star Wars yes. series, right? And other great sci-fi writers had all these sorts of ideas and they build on certain other types of myths that you touch on. Yes, in fact, um, so my first six myths are historic myths about science and uh, religion. Particularly, Christianity gets disproportionately picked on, and that's part of my book is kind of unpacking why that's the case. But, but uh, the, um, 
The sixth historic myth that I deal with is I call the Copernican demotion myth. And it's the idea that, well, we thought we were in the center of the world, the best place, until Copernicus demoted us. We're just, you know, one rocky planet among many others, and so that was a huge blow to traditional religion, when in fact it wasn't, because Copernicus himself believed in God and thought that his work was con completely consistent with human exceptionalism, that is, humans being of great intrinsic value, and, and uh, cosmology didn't have any effect on that in his view. So, uh, but the, that last historic myth actually ties into a new sort of future-oriented myth about uh, what might how, how the contact with extraterrestrial life might reformulate religions to make them no longer narrow-minded terrestrial religions, but a more universal religion that would, um, would do away with Christianity and uh, other specific religions and replace it with, well, a religion that's more in keeping with this, this new story, which I identify as a myth of a different sort, myth in the sense of an imaginative archetypal story that shapes the way people answer the basic questions about the world, who am I, where did I come from, where am I going, what's the purpose of life, you know, things like that. Yeah. Small things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fascinating. Um, I'm glad that we had a chance just to talk briefly, let our uh, family, friends, viewers, followers, likers on Facebook and YouTube and so on know what you're doing. The book is undeniable. Or unbelievable. The book is unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. I have a colleague I, who's written another book called Undeniable. But this book is un. This is a book. Unbelievable. Of, the way to remember it is once when you look when you hear these stories about science and Christianity being at war with each other, once you get all the facts, those stories themselves are unbelievable. And that's where the title comes from. Unbelievable. Uh, ISI Press, you can get it from Amazon. So look for it there. You can pre-order it. The book will be out in November. Thank you, Mike Keys. Yes, thanks, Rob.